Hi, and welcome to this month's issue of the Home Cooking Newsletter. I'm Kathy. Dan couldn't be with us today because he is right now feverishly working on the next upgrade of cooking. So I'm here with my good friend Jeannie Wolfley. She's taking his place and she's going to teach us how to make artesian bread or artisan bread. I don't know how to say it, but I love to eat it. It is really good and surprisingly simple. Tell us about it, Jeannie. Well, that's the thing. It is surprisingly simple. In fact, it's probably the simplest bread you will ever make. Um, and I shied away from it for a long time. I've loved it, but I shied away from it because I read books on how you had to throw ice cubes into the oven and do all kinds of crazy things to get this beautiful crusted bread. And I'm going to show you how easy it actually is. And there are two or three tips that are really important, but other than that, it's very, very simple. I've always said that uh, making bread is a little bit science, a little bit art, and a lot of love. And so we're going to show you how to make this artesian bread today. Well, show me the love. Let's okay, go. Okay. All right. All you need to do is measure out three cups of flour and dump it into a mixing bowl. You won't believe how easy this is. It's easy okay. and it's beautiful. This only takes one quarter of a teaspoon of yeast, which isn't very much at all. In fact, I wondered how that was going to work. And then this is just... Um, one and a half teaspoons of salt. And I'm kind of picky about my salt, so I usually use a little bit more. Um, I use real salt, but whatever you like will work. Just stick that in there. Then just take a minute and just kind of stir that around with your hand. There is no kneading involved in this bread at all. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it is. It's very, very <laughs> easy. And I love the hand thing. I'm a, I'm a well, hand Well, and I'm if you want to, cook. if you want to, you can use a spoon or a fork or a paddle like this. But I like to just get in there and get it done. This is really an important thing right here that the water has to be exactly the right amount. It's room temperature and it's one and a half cups plus two tablespoons. And all you do is dump that in there. Take your hand, mix it around. Remember, there's no kneading involved. It's kind of messy, but kind of fun. Um, for those of you that made glue when you were a little kid out of this kind of stuff, you're familiar with the feel. Just mix it around like that. Only takes a minute. Okay, there is no oil at all involved in this bread, which is very unusual. Not only in the, no oil in the bread, but no oil in the pot as well. Okay, I have that all mixed up. At this time, if you're going to put in any mixins, like if you would like to have some cheese, some pepper, maybe some rosemary, anything like that, now's the time to put it in. And you were saying that you could do like craisins and cinnamon or uh -huh. something if you wanted to do. I have a son that likes to make this, and he puts craisins and he puts um, uh, some cinnamon and some allspice in it, and he uses it during the holidays. Yum. And he likes to serve it with goat cheese. Awesome. And he gets lots and lots of re good reviews on that. You know, I've never made it before, but it is very simple. It I is. It. And I just put it, you notice there's no oil in the pan, in, in this uh, um, pan right here either that I'm going to let it sit so in. So it took like what, a couple minutes? I made out the flour and stuff. It took like a couple minutes to make. You can double it. You can triple it. Whatever you want to do. If you double it, will you put it all in the same pan if you um, just have a bigger pot? You can do two in here, but three is just too much. But two works really well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to sit this in my pantry for probably 12 to 18 hours. I have gone as long as two days, but never longer than that. And in the pantry, you're, huh? In not the pantry. No, nope, not in the refrigerator, in the pantry. Okay, Kathy, after I've had this in the pantry for 18 hours or so. We're back from the pantry. Maybe even just 12 hours. <laughs> it's work. It works, but you can leave it in there for quite a while. Then you go ahead and you take it out and you'll notice that it's really bubbly. It's very spongy and, and very wet. It'll almost fall out of the pan. Another really important thing is that you need to have a tea towel. A flat tea towel. Uh-huh. You need to have one that's not terry. Mm -hmm. um, this just works so much better. Could you use like a pillowcase if you didn't you have could, one? You could. You could. Anything like that. Okay. And you can use flour 
or you can use um, cornmeal. Oh. I prefer flour, but some people like to use cornmeal. And you just do the same thing with the cornmeal. You want this well floured because it's a very um, sticky. sticky dough. And I've already got a little bit of flour on my hands, so this is going to help a little bit. I take the dough and I just push it down into the tea towel like that. Really nothing to it. Take a little bit more flour and I just form it into a ball. I don't want the ball to be too thick. I want it to spread out a little bit. Just like that. And I want to make sure I have flour on both sides of my tea towel. Okay. okay? And then what I like to do, because I like the look of it, I like to take this a serrated knife and just run it across my bread like this. And it just kind of just adds a little more interest to the bread. Okay, then I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to let this sit while I get the oven screaming hot. Okay. And this is another screaming really hot. important thing. I'm going to turn my oven up to 450, 500 degrees and I'm going to use a pot. And this is another important thing when you're making this bread is the pot has to have a lid on it and it has to conduct the heat well. You could use this is um, a beautiful one. This is. This we, is have a, we have a neighbor that's a potter, <laughs> and he makes these beautiful pots. And one day it dawned on me, after I'd been making it in cast iron, which works great, that I bet Ed's pots would be the best. Perfect. Because you're simulating a clay oven, which is what they do usually with artisan bread. So, but you could also use like a Dutch oven. You can use a Dutch oven. Or, or you could use an enamel pot as long as it's got a lid, lid. and it will get really hot. That's the important thing. You're simulating like a clay oven. So we're preheating to 500, right? Right. And I'm going to stick the pan in right away. Okay. And we're going to leave it in there for about a half an hour. Let the bread sit and just get this pot screaming hot. Okay? Right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm just going to let my bread sit and let it just rest. So we'll meet you back here when it's screaming. When you hear the screaming, we're coming back. <laughs> Kathy, do you think our oven is screaming hot now? Oh! <laughs> it, it, must it, sounds like it. it must be ready. Okay, now this is really screaming hot, and so I have to make sure I have some gloves on. You're um, beautiful gloves. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're very <laughs> ugly, but they're a lifesaver, and I really appreciate the fact that I have them. Okay, so this is very hot. And what I'm going to do now is transfer the bread into the pot. And notice that there isn't any oil in this pot at all, nor in the bread. Okay. So that's got to be good for the waistline. Yeah. So how do you not burn yourself? Do you just throw it? I throw it. Yes, <laughs> I throw it in like that. You throw it in. And if you don't get it centered really good, you don't need to worry too much because you can move it around a bit. See how it kind of moves around in there? Okay. Just looks like a cool. nice little big blob of dough right there. Okay, I put the lid on. And I'm going to stick this in the oven. I'm going to turn the oven down to about 350 degrees, maybe 400, depending on your oven. And we're going to stick it in there, and it has to cook for one hour. One hour, all but right. But you know, when you're getting ready to have somebody over for dinner, or you're getting ready for dinner, there's a lot of things you can do in an hour. Absolutely, and the prep time is almost nothing. Nothing, yeah. That's awesome. And, and I can check this probably uh, about 20 minutes before it's done, and if it's not brown enough, or I want it to be a little browner, I just go ahead and take the lid off for a little while. Perfect. Okay. Jeannie was also telling me that it makes fabulous croutons, like the best croutons you've ever had. Yes, if you have leftover, <laughs> If you have leftovers, make sure that you don't waste them because they will be the best croutons you ever make. And also, another important tip is do not put this in plastic afterwards because if you put it in a plastic bag, it's going to get soft. Mm -hmm. And, and so you want to... because it has that hard shell and that, the soft if you, That's inside. what you want. So you can put it in a paper bag or you can put it in a tea towel. All right. Okay. I can't okay. wait till it comes out. Let's <laughs> okay. check that bread. I think our hours come and gone. <laughs> And remember to be really careful with this. It's really hot. Okay. 
Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. And this is what you have. That is gorgeous. I when love it, it. When it comes out, you can set it out and you can hear it cracking. It's really a neat sound. It looks just like restaurant, it, like you get at a restaurant. It's beautiful. Thank you. Should we cut hey, a slice? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to get my gloves. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, Jeannie. Does it take a special talent? Nope. You're perfect. Oh, nice hard crust with a soft inside. That's perfect. That is just how I love it. I like the... This is so beautiful. It really is like the kind you get from the restaurants. Check it out. And you know what would be great with this? Those oil and vinegars. We have some. One of our customers um, does this Migliori mm. vinegars, flavored vinegars and oil. I love this. This is one of my and favorite they, things. They're fabulous. They are so good. Here's the one of my favorites, the garlic, kettle um, roasted garlic. Garlic. I you can could put, actually put garlic in that bread, too. I could put that on everything. Mm, can you smell it? Mm -hmm. This will be fabulous with this bread. Mm. And vinegar. Do you want to taste some with me, Jeannie? Jeannie I do. This is so soft and wonderful. My goodness. That mm. is fabulous. I like it. It works for me. It's fabulous. I hope you enjoy it. I'm just going to notice there is no oil in this pan at all. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You can't pick it up like that. It's oh, that's right. Hot. It's screaming hot. <laughs> okay. Just start all over again. Okay. I have to remember this. Is screaming. <laughs> close up so you don't okay. actually have to pick it up honestly people will think you've spent hours and hours doing this sorry okay hold on I, i'm butchering it <laughs> how can i recover that's the hardest part of the bread of cutting it. Hang on. Don't get that because my tongue was hanging out and everything. It's, it's got. We got it. Yeah, we're still rolling. Okay. So whatever you want. Okay. Hi, I'm Alice Osborne. I write for the DVO Cooking Club. I'm a DVO associate, and I'm the author of the best selling book on clutter management, space management, called It's Here Somewhere and also the author of the DVD, It's Here Somewhere in the Kitchen. And today, I'd like to share just a quick little organization and time and energy saving tip with you. So let's go over here now, and I wanna show you something. Oh, and by the way, pay attention, no apron. This is important, figures into the demonstration. All right, <clears throat> now, let's say that we're going to mix, oh, something splattery, messy, like whipping cream, puddings or a cake mix, something that splatters. What do we usually do? We put the product in the mixing bowl, right? And then we set it on the counter and then ah, mixy, mixy, mixy. In the process, what happens? We get splatters all over the backsplash, the undersides of the cupboards, sometimes on ourselves, and then of course on appliances and everything else on the cupboard. And uh, what does that do? That creates a cleanup mess for us. Instead, Here's what we should do. Put your product in your mixing bowl. Put the mixing bowl in a paper bag. Uh-huh. And then set that bag in the sink. Well, first of all, why would I do that? Let me show you. It is so much more ergonomically correct, if you will, to mix down like this rather than mixy mixy up here like this. Can you see the stress that puts on my muscles, my arm, my shoulder? Much, much easier. This really deflects the pain and the strain factor. So from now on, mix down in the sink. Just put your mixing bowl in the sink. If anything splattery, put it in the paper bag. And why would I do that? Well, mixy, mixy, mixy. Now instead of splatters going all over everywhere and me, they're going on the inside of the bag. And what does that mean? No muss, no fuss, clean up. I pull my product, pull my mixing bowl out of the bag, and if I want to, I can just toss the bag or save it for later mixing, whatever. But the point is, I don't have to clean anything up. And I don't even have to wash an apron. 
I didn't even need to wear one. Can you see how this saves you so much time and energy? Well, for more great tips and tricks, just like this one, um, go to our DBO website and be sure to check out our great It's Here Somewhere DVD. And until next time, happy cooking.